Welcome back to Christmas in the Garden with Adela, my friend. So yesterday's video was all about preparedness in the garden and today's video is about seeds for preparedness. All right, because in order for you to actually grow a garden, you have to have seeds. And so I'm not gonna really focus on starting your plants or buying seedlings from a nursery or from your local big box stores, but I'm going to focus on growing the seeds. All right, because when you have a seed, you actually can do much more than buying the purchased seedlings from the store. You have much more. It's, it's better for your money that way to actually purchase a packet of seeds rather than just one or two or three plants from the big box store. So today we're going to look at seeds for preparedness, how you should prepare with these seeds, where you should get your seeds from, how many seeds you need to have, what you should do with your seeds if they say it's actually expired or um, how to plant the seeds. We're not going to really focus on how you actually are going to plant your seeds. Those are coming up in other videos, but we are going to talk about what you are to do with the seeds when you do get the seeds and how you should prepare yourself to have a successful garden in 2022. Before we begin, I want you to first of all understand exactly what is a seed. A seed is an embryonic plant, all right? It's an embryonic plant that simply wants to grow. If you give a seed the right conditions, and sometimes not even the best conditions, it will grow. So if you give the seed the right conditions, and sometimes not even the best conditions, it's going to grow because that is the nature of what it is. Everything that that seed needs in order to become its full potential, its full intended self is found within that seed. The only thing that needs to happen is that it needs to be planted into the proper medium, into the proper soil, and then it's going to do what it needs to do. Give it the right conditions, as best as the right conditions as you can give it, and it's going to grow for you. So that is what a seed is. Now there are many different types of seeds. And so you may see some of my seed boxes here where I keep my seeds. I have many of them. I have ones for sprouts. I have one for microgreens. I have flowers. I have the tomatoes and peppers and squash and herbs, all of those types of seeds packaged properly because you also need to store them properly for longevity so that you're able to grow from them season after season. All right. Now the first thing to do when trying to get prepared for for seeds, with seeds for your garden, is first and foremost to request the seed catalogs. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of seed catalogs from the past seasons. These seed catalogs are simply just that. They are not the seeds, they are the seed catalogs in which you're going to look through these catalogs and order your seeds. Now, you may become overwhelmed when you get a seed catalog because there are a lot of seeds. What I always tell people to do first and foremost is before you open up the seed catalog, write down the foods that you desire to grow. If you want to grow squash, herbs, tomatoes, pumpkins, zucchini, write that list out. That is the first thing that you want to do is to make a list of what you actually want to grow and what your family is going to eat. Do not plant, I repeat, do not plant do not take the time out do not put your energy into it do not cry over it over plant your family is not going to consume it will be a waste of your time of your energy of your effort of your sleepless nights of you checking the weather of you watering of you composting of you fertilizing of you doing anything with those plants if you're growing what your family is not going to eat so make a list once you've ordered your catalogs, whichever direction you want to do it, order the catalogs, then make a list or, or make the list, then get the catalog, whichever way you decide to do it, just make sure that you do those two things in tandem. Make sure they're done at the same time, around the same time so that you're properly prepared. The worst thing that anybody can do is to spend hundreds of dollars on seeds that is not going to be useful for them or seeds that you already have in abundance okay so one thing that i do is i purchase things in abundance because the good thing about seeds is, is that they're not going to spoil uh, uh this is not um mayonnaise or butter that has a expiration date these are seeds and as long as i give it the right conditions when they're not planted such as a dry location a cool location away from moisture so that they don't mold they're going to last for some time right seeds of course have their own germination rate and so the younger the seeds 
the higher the germination rate okay i hope you understand that the younger the seeds are so let's say i harvested a tomato last year i took some of the seeds same thing with some peppers i took some of those seeds it is expected that those seeds will still produce a plant for me next season all right i still expect to receive plants from those seeds now if i have seeds that are 10 years old don't throw them away <laughs> don't throw them away do not do not throw them away keep them and more than likely some of them will still germinate all right because that's the nature of a seed a seed just wants to grow it wants to do its thing it wants to flourish it wants to show you who it is and what it is and what it's actually meant to do so you don't want to throw them away yes a 10 year old seed may not be as viable as a two year old seed however it's still expected to produce as long as you have kept it in a location that it will be able to be preserved inside of okay so once you get your seed catalog i want you to actually go through the seed catalog and one beautiful thing about these seed catalogs is that a lot of them have pictures all right most of them have really nice pictures that the company has taken and then they they actually put them in categories so that you're able to shop for what you want like the first thing that i'm looking at here in this uh so true seeds and all these seed catalogs these companies that i've ordered these catalogs from i'm going to leave them down below so that you can do the same thing so that you can actually request their catalogs this is the time to request the catalogs this is the time to actually even start placing your orders for seeds because by january february they would have already been taken the ones that you probably want to grow the varieties that you want to grow they more than likely will be out of stock because people are already planning for their 2022 spring and summer gardens all right so the first page that i'm looking at are mushrooms now if you don't like mushrooms you have no interest in growing mushrooms then you can skip over it right just go to the lo next location and then the next page shows asparagus so i can look at the asparagus the var the varieties that they grow and then i'll pick the one that i want to do so if you watched last video and if you haven't after this video please watch it i mentioned that you want to actually know the types of plants that you want to grow based on what your family wants but what you also want to know when it comes to seeds are that they're different varieties of seeds. For instance, the most common type of tomato that you're going to find in the store is probably something like a Roma tomato or, or, or a beef steak. If your grocery store carries those type of tomatoes, right? You have, you're going to have a paste tomato, which is a Roma tomato. And then this slicer tomato, which is a beef steak tomato, tomato, it has more water inside of it. And then the peppers that you're commonly going to see will be a bell pepper, right which is not spicy uh some of them may be called sweet bell peppers okay or you will see a habanero pepper which is a spicy pepper you're not going to find poinsettia peppers you're not going to find long cayenne peppers typically you're not going to find that in the grocery store you're not going to find an amish paste tomato you're not going to find a hungarian wax pepper you're not going to find a, a true beef steak tomato you're not going to find a kellogg's breakfast tomato or an abe Lincoln tomato or a trophy tomato there are a plethora of tomatoes and peppers and zucchinis and asparagus and beans your job is to actually get your notebook sit down go through this grab your pen okay always have your pen so i'm on the page for bush beans and i can see that they have blue lake 274 which is a very common type of pole bean and they have cherokee wax which is very beautiful in color but it cooks green it turn is it grows purple but then it it cooks green and then they have a max bell haircut vert and provider romano royal burgundy tender green these are the types of bush beans that they have all right these are the types of bush beans that you can expect to purchase from this company now if you know that you like the taste of a blue lake 274 over the cherokee wax then just get that right so if you know that that's what you want to get then circle it all right if you're like me i write in these these catalogs they're meant to order from so you circle it or get a sticky pad a sticky note and put a sticky pad here on the page or fold the page over so that you can remember what it is that you want to purchase and then keep going through the book if you know that your family wants to eat drying beans and you want to purchase the seeds for the drying beans so on this page I'm looking at the different varieties of the drying beans or I call them shelling beans that you're going to purchase from them so for instance i've grown black turtle drying beans and i know that we like it so i will circle it and purchase it okay so you'll do that throughout the whole book or whichever company's book that you're going through and look for what it is that you want to grow again don't purchase anything 
nothing that your family is not going to eat. It doesn't make any sense for you to have to do that. You're just going to be wasting money and you're going to be wasting your efforts and your resources if you even grow those type of things. All right. So evaluate the seeds that you already have. If you're like me, you have a plethora of seeds. Evaluate the ones that you have and then also take inventory on the ones that you want to have, that you want to grow and, and also grow what your family wants to eat. If you are adventurous like myself, maybe once a season or in the season, try one or two different new types of plants to see if you're actually going to like it so that you can grow it in abundance next year. For instance, I grew a tomato called Big Mama tomato last year. It's a paste type of tomato. I loved it for the types of dishes that we eat in my home. It was very essential and very uh, it was a huge staple in our diet. So I needed to grow it. And this year I grew a lot of them too many also i know that we use hot peppers a lot last year i think i only grew 18 hot pepper plants this year i grew about 80 so you can see the difference and uh it, it was a lot of work <laughs> it was a lot of work to start those seeds and i've started all of those except one from seed when you request the catalog like i've mentioned then you're going to do your inventory of what you want to grow. You go through the catalogs, pick what you want to grow. There are catalogs for seeds, for vegetables and fruits. There are catalogs for trees, if you want to plant trees outside. There are catalogs for flowers, if that's what you want to plant as well. But since we're talking about foods that we're eating, we're talking mainly about the vegetables and the fruits that we want to grow from seed. Once you have that, once you know what you are going to grow, then you want to do something called crop planning. And what is crop planning? It can be as simple as this. I'm a big time paper girl. I love to write things down because it just makes it a lot easier for me. And I have this mentality that sometimes uh, technology can go out if, if we're not careful. And so I don't really like to rely on technology. I've actually even tried to use technology. I've tried to use the crop planting tools online, but I just much prefer to write things out as you can see. And I will show you some close ups of this of how I write things out, list the things that I'm growing for 2021. So since this was the 2021 inventory, I did a crop planning of everything that I will grow. So on this first page, I have herbs and medicinal herbs that I grew. And I have on the next page, the brassicas and the lettuces that I wanted to grow and that I did grow. I have a list of the tomatoes. So on this page here are all the tomatoes that I grew. On the next page, I have peppers. And then on this next page, I have large crops which included the squash and the cucumbers that i grew the different types of squash which include uh the the early summer quick neck squash and eggplant and okra plants and 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 gourds which is loofah if you know loofah i grew the loofah not to eat but for the actual sponge to be able to use the sponge uh in the bathroom uh, and I also grew, grew some fruit plants. And so I did that was my initial thing. When I was going through my inventory of the seeds that I have, I went through what I actually wanted to grow. And because I grew last year, I knew what it was that I wanted to grow. And I also knew the amount that I wanted to grow. And so when you're ordering your seeds, you want to make sure that you're purchasing the amount of seeds that you're going to need. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer to grow plants from seed as opposed to buying it as a seed start, because I can buy a pack of seeds seeds for three dollars let's say from so true seeds or from johnny seeds four or five dollars from johnny seeds and in that packet i may get 50 seeds and every seed equates one plant so if i get 50 tomato seeds that means that there there are 50 plants potentially within this packet and i may get 50 plants if all of them germinate as opposed to spending five dollars on just a start all right. So if you're just buying just a start from the nursery, from the local nursery, then you're spending five dollars for just one plant. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying a started plant. If that is what you want to do, there's absolutely nothing wrong. The goal here is to just grow a, a garden, grow food for your family. OK, but if you're looking to save money, if you're looking to be as frugal as possible while gaining the abundance that the earth can give you, you want to actually purchase the seeds and know how many of those plants you're going to grow. Like I mentioned I knew that I was going to grow a lot of hot peppers because that is something in our home tomatoes and hot peppers are a must you must must have them in every dish our staple dishes that we cook 
every single week we use tomatoes and we use hot peppers and so i knew that i wanted to grow a, an abundance of them so as opposed to growing just 18 plants like i did last year this year i chose to grow almost 80 plants about 78 plants pepper plants for the season and boy did they produce because i need them and so what that is going to help me do is not have to purchase these peppers from the store right if you go to the grocery store you can see how much bell peppers are bell peppers right now where i am is about three dollars per pound some five dollars a pound and if you're buying these big chunky bell peppers a pound may just be two peppers three peppers and you're spending five dollars on something that you could have grown from seed when you just plant it into into the ground and you can get a plant that's probably worth 10 cents because of the packet that you've purchased it from. All right, so once you have that information, once you know the seeds that you're going to that you're going to plant, once you have already done your list of seeds that you're purchasing from the the store, then you're going to do a garden layout. It is essential imperative to know where you're going to plant your crops. And so on this page, which I will also show you a close up of, I have a garden layout, all right? A scheme of how my garden beds look. This year I expanded my garden. Next year we are going to expand it even more. I had eight garden beds and I had an ingrown or in ground rather pepper plant bed. And so I also have a plethora of containers. So I grew in abundance and I had to map them out. I needed to know where things were because if you start these plants from scratch or you buy them from the nursery and you don't know where they're gonna go in your garden, you're just gonna waste it. Or if you put them where they're not going to thrive, okay, they're not going to yield their increase. So you want to map it out. You want to map out exactly where each plant is going to go. You have to take that meticulous note. You need to take it and know where those seeds are going to be planted, especially if you're planting seeds directly in the ground like carrots, okay, like radishes, like turnips and beets and kohlrabi. These are seeds that you don't really want to plant from start because their, their roots don't like to be disturbed. They want to be directly in the soil and that is where they're going to grow so that you can eventually yield and harvest them from that location. So you must know, like when I planted my carrots this year, I needed to know exactly where those carrots would go so that I don't have to disturb them. Same thing with onions. I had a complete bed and a half of onions and I and I needed to know that right from the start, right? You don't want to put onions also uh, because they're growing from seeds. You don't want to put them in a place where, let's say, they will be covered by a tall tomato plant if the sun is, is in, in a specific location. You want them to actually have the most amount of sun in that specific location. So that is the reason why you want to crop plan. Crop planning is very essential when it comes to knowing exactly where you're going to put these seeds once you get them. Also, purchase seeds for yield and production. It's wonderful to grow these funky varieties, these new varieties, um, because you see them. So it's wonderful to grow purple green beans, but if you don't like the taste of a purple green bean, then don't buy it, right? If you don't like the taste of snap peas, don't buy it. If you don't like the taste of stringless peas, don't buy them. Uh, stringless beans, don't buy them. If you don't like shelling beans, don't buy them. Buy whatever your family is gonna yield the most from. So those things that are going to be easily preserved and stored, you want to purchase those as well. You, you also want to know the variety. I briefly mentioned it, okay? Study the variety that grows best in your location. When purchasing seeds, there, there are hundreds of seeds in every category. You don't want to purchase a seed, you don't want to purchase a seed packet that's not going to grow in your location because by you doing that you're just going to be wasting your money you're going to be wasting your time and you're going to be wasting your efforts you want to make sure that you are going to grow seeds in the location where you are that's going to germinate good fruit